This episode of Working Class Nerds is brought to you by Chimeri Sand. For all of your sand castle, sand papega, and sand needs, just hit up twitch.tv slash Chimeri and ask for some sand. Hey, I'm Marcus. And I'm Atrax. We are Working Class Nerds. Cue the intro. We are Working Class Nerds, the podcast that gives you no information about your favorite information. Today is Thursday, July 20th, 2023, and you can find this 207 podcast on Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and anywhere you can find a podcast in the galaxy far, far away. And you can once again find every single Working Class Nerds episode on YouTube. Search for the Working Class Nerds podcast. Go to youtube.com slash at Working Class Nerds. Click on the playlist, click on Working Class Nerds, and boom! Now it is set to a podcast playlist, so you have every episode right there, right available at your fingertips. And you can watch me completely fail at video games Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays at kick.com slash MarcusB814. And you can watch me play video games every single Friday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at twitch.tv slash A underscore Atrax. And you can watch our co-host completely fail at video games every single Monday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash NickVern51. I swear, if he calls out of streaming this coming Monday, he's officially quit streaming because it'll be a month off. But... We're all on the social media. I'm at MarcusB814. I am at Atrax underscore A, and he is at Nick Vern. That's NNKCB. You're in this week's episode. It's just us. Did I mess up his Twitch handle? I don't think so. You do every it time, right. and it's the best. What Do I really? Yes, you do. It's every time. <laughs> you're, you're like N-I-K-C-V-R-E-N. Oh, it's the best. You do it every time, so it's like custom made. So as Atrex was saying, All it's right. just us. While Nick's away, we're going to talk as much crap as we possibly can about Nick because yeah. Nick is just – he's eating – is like four ice creams a day. He's eating as much sand from Chimeri's sand factory as he can. And he's drinking as much beer as he possibly can handle because he's in sunny, cold Maine. It's, and if you're from Maine, I'm sorry. But so if anybody's not from Maine and you guys don't know what it's like, they only have one month a year where there's no snow and that's July. And the water temperature wow. doesn't get over 45 degrees, and it's like a perfect like 80 degrees, so the weather is really nice, but it's the water is so freezing that when you go in there, it's like insta shrinkage. Yeah, that's how it is out here, too. But so Nick is in here. Um, we were going to have Prideful Sloth on it, the makers of GoGo Town, but they have been promoting the snot out of their game. Everywhere they possibly can showcase it and show it off, they're going. And poor Cheryl was going to come on, but her voice sounds like she's um, a 70-year smoker and she's only 25 <laughs> years old. But so she's yeah. uh, they've been rescheduled for the August 3rd episode. We can't wait to have that because I can't wait to talk about that game. But yeah, the playtest was super fun. Um, when does the playtest end? It's over already. I got the notification on Steam that my card, my key got pulled. So oh, good. it's over. Yep. Yeah. Great. Um. So it's it's good to be back, Atrax, to hear your voice. Nick's not here, so we kind of have a little void in our energy level. But we're gonna make this our own flavor of show. So Atrax, yeah. over the course of the last two weeks. Because you called out of the podcast sick last week, but you weren't sick. You were boozing with your buddy who was in town. What have you been up to? <laughs> That's one way to word it, I guess. For sure. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, typical gamage like usual. 
work work in video games. That's uh that's the life of the old A tracks, and and that's how I like it really. So Steam, Steam Summer Sale officially ended, and I swooped. I ended up buying House Flipper and Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade, which I. I really don't know all these different names, like what the difference between 7 Remake and 7 Remake Intergrade is. I guess the Intergrade is just the PC version of it from how I understand it. It was half off. Normally it was 70 and it was, I think, 35 or 39 That's a good deal. or something like That's that. That's a good deal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I Yeah, that for sure. That's a good deal. Played it on stream Friday night, and a lot of people in the community really liked it. So I'm going to continue with it because it is a super well-made game. Final Fantasy 16 is out now on PS5. So, uh, yeah, it's just, it's been a lot of fun. It's a little difficult for me because the combat is, I haven't figured out the combat yet. It's kind of dodgy and actiony but also at the same time you still have the final fantasy like selecting your abilities you're mm-hmm. not just in combat you will pause battle for a second yeah and select commands and abilities and stuff like that so it's taking me a while to get used to that normally i'm a one character player i don't play a whole lot of games that are regularly i'm switching between characters in the middle of a battle my mind is kind of it's hard to like break that sphere of just one character, but I'm gonna get through it. It's been a lot of fun so far. The game is really, really well made. It runs super good on my computer, so I'm I'm having fun with it. I'm glad that I. So this it. is the 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 Final Fantasy VII remake that came out for the PlayStation a while ago. It was the remake, the first the first episode of it. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. and so, so this is the PC version, and I believe that they have also since that remake. It's kind of like another addition to the remake, the inner grade part, because they scaled it up for PC and something like that. I right. don't know exactly. So, I call how that it the works, Game but... of the Year edition. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, now, did you play the original Final Fantasy VII? Oh yeah, a long time. I still have the the disc is somewhere around. To, well, four. It was four <laughs> discs, but I still have like the case. No discs, no. Everything. No, yeah, I have it. I have oh. the discs in the PlayStation. Don't ever sell those. Oh no, the, dude, those I'm motherfuckers. Oh. That that I might be one of. Well, I know, but that might be one of the most profitable like game you can get. Yeah, for sure. And Absolutely. I remember, I remember when that game came out. And I got it, and um, I was at my friend Rick G's, and we legit stayed up for 28 hours straight playing that game. Oh, yeah. And you weren't even, like, it wasn't, you were, like, you were out of the tutorial after 28 hours. (laughs) Yeah, finally. (laughs) Right. It gave us. After switching, you'd, you'd walk to an area, please switch to game disc two. Yes, exactly. And then exactly. you try to walk to the next area. Please switch to game disc three. And then you're like, oh, crap, I forgot something. Game disc two. Game disc one. Game disc two. Game well, disc three. I remember when it told me to go to game disc three, and then it told me to go back to two, and then back to three. I was like, so is the game forcing me to go back because I screwed something up, or did I just straight up forget something? That's that's how it is with RPGs, isn't it? There's There's always something that you're forgetting. But I can remember playing those games, and I would literally go to an open field and just battle monsters for hours. Like, I would not progress the story. I would just grind. And that's why I think, like, because I'm from that era of the original, like, the JRPGs where you just grinded enemies, that I was so appealed to, as an adult, appealed to MMOs. Because you're used to that grind and it's not, it doesn't feel like a grind because it's what you know, where like right. kids nowadays, they just do battle royale. And as soon as the, as soon as they get shot out, they can respawn in. So they're like, why would I play a game like destiny or an RPG? It's fucking stupid. Right. And grind. Why do I want to fight the same monster 18 times for 5 XP? Bro, that 5 XP adds up. You kill him five times, that's 25. That's that's a quarter of a level in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. 
It reminds me of the the South Park episode where Cartman's like, "All we have to do is hide in the wilderness and kill boars." Yeah, playing World of Warcraft. Like, yes. yeah, that's that's how it is. Yeah, good times. Uh, that and, might be that might be my favorite episode of all time of South Park. Mm, it's it's definitely up there for me. It, it's got to be know mine if it's because my like, favorite. But well, it's because it resonates with me. Whether you played WoW or another game, but think about like, yep earlier like when you were a kid like i remember me castlevania symphony of the night i remember this i played that game from sun up to sun down like and i fought a boss for hours trying to beat this boss and like i couldn't yeah. do it but you couldn't shut off the game because if you smash your controller you didn't have the money to buy another one nope. b and like back then stores closed at five o'clock like you weren't getting it until mm-hmm. sunday if your parents would even bring you right like, like they no, were you keep smashing controllers. It's over. You're done with video games altogether. Right. And I remember I'll never forget. I started I was screaming at the top of my lungs because I finally in the library got the double jump. Mm. And like because I knew once I got the, to the library, I would be close to the double jump. dude. And I screamed at the top of my lungs. And then it was just flying books that would fuck you up. Because, like, the controls were so clunky back then, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I really oh, wish yeah. they would make a remake of that game. Symphony, That's the greatest. Symphony yeah. of the Night? Yeah. Is Symphony it not on Night. Steam? No. You can get, you used to be able to buy it on the Xbox uh, Live. That's how I have it. Uh, so I have a brand new oh, copy. Okay. So I have a brand new copy of it sealed, never opening it. Then I have a Greatest Hits that I played. And then I have. Um, and then I have it on my Xbox digitally from the Xbox Live Store back when it was the 360. So that's how I play it when I play it. But, yeah, the controls are so clunk, Master 5000. Right. Wow, they don't even, even in all the Castlevania collections, they don't have Symphony of the Night. That's I, weird. I don't know. Like, I should research this. I, I am talking out of school, but I wonder if... Somebody has the rights to that game. Like Konami has it, but like it's not, it's like separate from everything else. Because why wouldn't they put that? There's a reason why that game is not in any of those collections. Because you have the uh, something in despair from the Game Boy Advance or, or, or yeah. two, the original DS. So the, original the, anniversary, DS. the anniversary collection comes with Castlevania. Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, 3, Dracula's Curse, Super Castlevania 4, Castlevania The Adventure, Castlevania 2, Belmont's Revenge, Castlevania Bloodlines, Kid Dracula, never released in English before, and History of Castlevania, Book of the Crescent Moon. Yeah. And then the Advance Collection. That's all Game Boy Advance and uh, original DS games. Yeah. Circle of the Moon, Harmony Mm -hmm. of Dissonance, Dracula X, Aria of Sorrow, like... Aria of Sorrow, that's it. Why? Why not? Something, Lords of like, Shadow, Lords of Shadow 2. Wait, that comes in it? A-tracks. No, the, these, are, oh. these are two different games. I'm actually going to. Dude. Sorry. Like Yes? Um, uh, no, it's fine. I'm, I'm searching. Castlevania. Lords of Shadow. Castlevania. Symphony of the Night. There has to be someone out there. One of the nerds, please. Let oh, us know how we can play Symphony bullshit. of the Night. Like, what? come on. Like, are you kidding me right now? What is it? What happened? But Castlevania Lords of the Shadow Ultimate Edition is $30. This game came out in 2013. Like, fuck off. Like, I'm so, I'm so disappointed right now. I'm so disappointed. I'm actually beyond disappointed. So when this game comes on sale, put that in your uh, wish list. Lords of Shadow. Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Okay. Okay. When that comes on sale, I'm going to buy you that game. That is an unbelievable... Like, they took... I'm going to quickly interrupt you. Apparently, you can buy a version of Symphony of the Night on iOS or Android. Yeah, but who wants to play that shit on their phone? That's a good question. I don't that's know. Not, no, that's not. No, no. Anyway, back to Weird. what we were saying is that game, the 
old school Final Fantasy, old school games. No, no, in no. General, but well, yeah, but Final Fantasy Seven. Well, what I was going to say about Castlevania, that Lords of the Shadow, it was like the first time they did like a three D, like on uh, like a Ninja Gaiden style Castlevania, and mm-hmm. the fucking moves you do are sick. The game was awesome. The story was amazing. Like they came out Lords of Shadow two because number one did so well. I beat Lords of Shadow two and I enjoyed it, but it was like thrown together. It was like the first you, one's better. Yeah, dude, the second one sucked in comparison. Right. But like that first game is so good. Thirty bucks for the ultimate edition. Don't buy it. It's not worth no, thirty dollars. I'm not gonna buy now. it. I added it on my wish list. I was yeah, just, I just saw it. The, I'll buy that shit for you once it fucking comes on. Anyway, there we go. But. Final Fantasy Seven. I'm. I think for me, I would like to play it, but there's no time. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's how it is. All right. So, uh, in addition to Final Fantasy, I mentioned I bought House Flipper. That game is super calming. I've only played it for a couple of hours, but. It's it's fun to just like paint the walls and do the missions and get money for it like an unrealistic amount of money than you normally would for doing basic household items. House Flipper Two is coming out soon, and uh, I don't know I, I like those kinds of games for me, especially towards the end of the day. They're just mindless. it's a good way to get into the sleepy mood. Yeah, mindless, and then you just kind of get tired and you go to bed, and you just feel good because you. Did some house renovations in a virtual video game. So those were my two Steam Summer Sale pickups. Uh, what did you get in the Steam Summer Sale? Let me know in Discord. Hit us up. Be like, hey, this is what I swooped for the Steam Summer Sale. Uh, love I'm to so hear mad. From you in I'm, the community. I'm so mad, mad about it. Why? Um, you didn't get something? No, and I wanted to. So... I had in my cart um, Gal Guardians de- in Dead Cells. Yeah. And I meant to buy it, and every day I was like, oh, I'll just buy it tomorrow. Oh, I'll just buy it tomorrow. And I never did, and I'm like, and I'm kicking myself in the ass because we're not going to see another Steam sale now until fall. Yeah, the autumn sale, which is like November, what, September, October. No, it's, I thought it was in November. I think it's before Thanksgiving. Which yeah, is, I so mean, that's, I know November. that's November. I know that's November, but like... Yeah, but we're not going to see a sale, and I'm like, Well, screwed. there's the Halloween sale. You'll for sure have that. So I Yeah, think but that's not going to be... A, sale, well, Gal Guardians. Okay, uh, let's see what we got here. Summer sale... The next sale is Steam Scream Fest, which is Halloween. Hey, I guess the autumn sale is after November. Wow, I thought it was earlier. November 21st. And then the winter sale is December 21st. But you have uh, Visual Novel Fest coming up. Strategy Fest. Ooh, looking forward to that. August 28th through September 4th. Shmup Fest, no clue what that is, and then Next Fest, which is in October. So there's a couple sales, but yeah, you you are right that the sales are going to be less and less uh, after this, right? But you know what I did buy that wasn't on sale? What? Story what? of Seasons: A Wonderful Life. Oh my god. And you know what? I'm going to be honest. It's uh, it's just a good life, in my opinion. It's <laughs> it's not a wonderful life. It's just a good life. I'm enjoying my playthrough, but it feels, in comparison to the other Story of Seasons, it just doesn't feel as like fleshed out. There's a lot of events that just seem to happen, whereas in the other games, the townies will tell you, hey, at least for the first year, hey, this event is happening on your calendar. Get ready for it. It's tomorrow or it's in two days or something like that. They would give you a heads up and the town would start looking like it. Some of these events just appear out of nowhere. 
Like one of them, I went into my house at 11 o'clock at night and all of a sudden they're like, hey, it's the fireworks festival. So uh, get ready and you're, you're going to like hang out and watch some fireworks. It's the fireworks festival. I was just like, oh, uh, okay. My energy is depleted and I still got to get my cows in. But it's all cool. I guess I'll watch some fireworks, even though you didn't tell me. So it's just kind of like, I, I don't know. Some things just randomly happen. But at its core, I'm having a really good time because it is still just a farming simulator. And you help grow the town. And you get your cows and your sheep and your crops and all of that stuff. And it's it's a good game. You know? Overall. I, I do. I've, I say I'm not a sim game player, but like I love Go Go Town. Yeah, and that's a that'll sim. be your gateway game. Yeah, Go Go Town Gateway. That's G- how it triple, starts. Triple G, Triple G. Go Go Town. Go Go, go support them because that game's awesome. Go Go. Had a lot of fun with that. Go Go. Go Go Town. My Actually. Demo. I'll I'll use this time to talk about my Go Go Town experience with the playtest because I mean might might as well why not right I like last time had a lot of fun with it and I like the I like the new how do I say it like the expansion that they the added new town? to the yeah the new town but also that you could do more because in the past I think it was just one time clock that you could have. Now you could add more time clocks. You could add, house a ton more people. And it was fun just running around and making sure that my town didn't fill up with garbage and made a ton of money. I learned this time that it's better to have just like a couple of each crop instead of a ton of one crop at a time and then replanting. Yep. It. I don't know, you learn something new every time. The fishing is cool, too, having, like, just the automated fish. Yeah. And it swoops up the crabs and all of that good stuff. I I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I like the pace of it, and it felt a lot more open to do what you wanted. Yeah. Because at one point, I was just like, I'm just going to let it fill with trash. <laughs> Did your town just get like full of trash? Yeah, and then you I just, cleaned just it up. filled it up. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. That's good. It's good. Yeah, go check out Go Go Town if you haven't already. Just wish list it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm. I don't know. Like, I'll be curious to see, like, where they're at in their development. If you know, they're st- thinking twenty three or twenty four, maybe twenty five. Twenty four. I think so, but you don't know. Yeah, that's true. I hope it's 23. <laughs> that's just me. Yeah. Uh, also, huge thank you to Kelsey from the Iterative Collective. I'm hoping to save that. Oh, apparently it- I'm not speaking at all. Iterative. Iterative. Iterative? Collective? Yes. yes. The Iterative Collective. There we go. Uh for hooking it up with a key to Homeseek, which is a top-down uh, sh- squad, not squad, yeah, squad survival game yep. where you have a town of people and you need to collect resources and divvy out your workers to ensure that you collect the right amount of resources. And random things happen like droughts and famines and extreme heat all of these d- things that make it difficult to survive. Uh, there are campaign missions which come with choices to make. There's endless modes which you can play in order to try and carry your troop all the way through the entire game. I haven't played a top-down sim survival sim like this since Frostpunk, which was a few years ago. I think it was, what, like, Oh, now I gotta look this up. When when did Frostpunk come out? Frostpunk two is coming out soon. I know that. That'll be exciting. Frostpunk. Oh, Frostpunk's on sale right now. Look at that. Uh, look okay, at so that. Twenty eighteen. Oh, till July 29th. Look at that. You can go buy Frostpunk, another survival sim, for eighty percent off. Eighty percent. 
Normally it's 30 bucks. You can get it for 6 or you can get the Game of the Year edition for 12 bucks. There you go. Frostpunk just got some free advertising. So, yeah, survival sims like that where you need to make sure that your uh, tribe or your group, your city, civilizations, survive through the harsh environment in which they are thrust upon. You can send them on expeditions in order to uh, expand the world and all of this good stuff. I had a lot of fun with it. I'm still playing it. It's out now. Home seek. Go buy it. It's a good game. I think it's 25 bucks on Steam. All right. 25. Yep. There it is. $25. And it's all about survival. So if you like that type of stuff, which I do, uh, it is it is highly recommended that you go check it out. Also coming out soon at the end of this month in seven days, next week, Remnant 2, which is the sequel to Remnant from the Ashes, which is a Souls-like uh, action game, but it's got guns. So it's kind of like Dark Souls, but with guns. You can play three-player co-op. In fact, it's kind of meant to be played as three-player co-op. And it is a ton of fun. Remnant 2 is coming out next week. I am really, really excited. I'm. Did we sure... play that game at PAX? No. We did not. What was that game that I played then? That was like... Uh, what do you mean? I played a game like Souls that was I was just as bad at. But I thought uh, you said... No, that was called Inatria. That's a different one. This is uh. Remnant. This game was already out. Remnant 2 wasn't at PAX. Sadly, if it was, that would have been really, really cool. I would have loved to play Remnant 2. But no, this is Remnant from the Ashes. I actually played it on stream when I was streaming like way back when. One of my 75 plus games that I played. Uh, my buddy Harrison and I played through it together. Because again, it's meant to be co-op. So super, super fun. We're looking forward to Remnant 2. Probably going to be the Friday night thing once it comes out. We'll maybe do uh, Remnant 2 and Final Fantasy, you know, all the dual games. We'll see what game of the month is next month. But Remnant 2 is is super, super exciting, and I can't wait to get it. And I hope that all of you out there will uh, get just as hyped as I am. Also, I mentioned this just a second ago, in Game of the Month news... Boop, 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 Battle boop, 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 boop. Remastered. This game has been a lot of fun. I've seen people out there in the community swooping it up. I've seen you in a couple of my games, actually. So shout out to all of you if you bought Battle Bit Remastered because you heard about it on the podcast because it's game of the month. Or you saw me streaming it on Friday. I've been streaming it actually every Friday for at least a little bit. And uh, if you hear me out there on the battlefield, like, oh, you got me, man. Hey, hey, you got to get me up. That's uh, that's me out there just begging to get rezzed. And then eventually I get shot again or blown up or something like that. But the devs have been doing good. They've had multiple patches to improve things. It's working. My hit registration is getting better and better. I'm getting less notifications that my... Shots didn't register due to packet loss or things of that nature. So shout out to the devs who are working hard to make this already really great game even better. And if you haven't gotten involved in the game of the month, swoop up BattleBit Remastered. I've played 17 and a half hours in the last two weeks. And that's not even the most amongst the people on my friends list. So it's a very active game. ton of people are playing it. It's a lot of fun if you want the old Battlefield style feeling. You know, Battlefield, Bad Company, and all of that good stuff. And that's it for me. Marcus, how's it going for you, man? It's going great. First thing I want to say is uh, congratulations to the IRS for winning $846.3 million off the Powerball last night. The winner of the $1.28 billion jackpot 
gets four hundred and thirty three point seven million after tax. So congratulations, IRS. You're the real winner. So I started uh, nothing. You have nothing to say to that. I'm, I'm shocked. I, I saw that and I was like, OK, so if you win a billion dollars, you're only getting 400. Somebody's getting rich. I mean, I I'm one of those people that I, I don't really think that the lottery is productive for anybody. So, right. But like, what's okay. the point, man? Like, it, obviously, it's just a huge money grab. Well, right. But hear me out. If you we're talking about you went from winning a billion dollars to not even five hundred million. That seems a little shady. I I think the the fact that people like are so surprised that it's a billion dollars is it really a billion? It's not a billion dollars. They're just saying that it's a billion dollars. No, it's really a billion dollars, dude. All right, but they still pay, dude. They're still paying out a check for four hundred thirty three point seven million. And exactly. listen, is that productive for well, anyone? No. I would say yes. But no. do you think? All right, wait, 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 wait. Well, it's not productive because you're going to. It's such if, a waste of money. If that was me, dude, I would die. <laughs> All right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't it's survive. Fair enough. Like, if I had $400 million, I'd be dead. Yeah. Like, all of my bucket list would be done in 30 days and I'd be dead. Just from flying around the country and jumping out of airplanes. All right. Fair enough. All right. Anyways, but what I was saying is I would say it's not real, except the two times there's been billion dollar jackpots. The people who won are from, drum roll please, California. You think California is not getting their tax money? Fuck that. There you go. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're mm-hmm. going to put that towards their gas prices. That's going to pay the government's gas for the next year because it's so expensive. Boom, boom, boom. Shh. Anyway, I just thought that was funny. I saw that headline and I was like, wow, you want a billion dollars and you only have 400? Seems like you got ripped off. I thought that they paid that out like over multiple years. So too. you so can they don't take, even get four hundred. Like, well, so if you take the monthly payments or the yearly payments, you get like six hundred million. Right. So the fact that they cashed it out is right. why they. Yeah. yeah. So you take a higher loss by right. the but the pay. I take the payout too. Listen, what if like the state goes bankrupt in like two years? Or the, the, the lottery. They can't they you can't guarantee that this place is gonna pay you for the next fifty years. I don't know how the lottery works at all, so I I mean, yeah. The way it works and, and people are gonna tell me I'm wrong, is if the drawing is on Wednesday, somebody wins this, now we're at zero. So now everybody starts going to the store and buys these lottery tickets. And that goes into the jackpot. So next month, next week, it could be a million dollars. But then if nobody wins it for a long period of time, the kitty just grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. And the reason why these kitties are so big, because it's $2 a ticket now. So it's like double gotcha. the money. You know what I mean? So anyway, sorry. That was my uh, that was my comedy show of the day. So as everybody uh, has known, I first want to say thank you. Um, this week, I tried something new. I've been talking about it with a tracks and Nick for a while now. And I have been trying to make a switch, not a permanent switch, but a little switch to kick. So kick.com is a Twitch style streaming platform. It uses Amazon web services. So believe it or not, the whole the whole streaming platform looks just like Twitch, except it's yeah. green instead of purple. Which and is the better color scheme, really. I think it is more appealing. It feels more alive to green me. Green is the best color. Well, green is my favorite color, but 
at the same time, it just to me feels more a lot like when you go to the website, the green pops. It makes like Twitch's mellow and uh, kick is on is electrified. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, so I've been debating on when I was going to do this for a little bit. And I decided a couple weeks ago that I was going to do it on a Tuesday night, which uh, was a clan night. But then I decided like two days prior or three days prior that I was going to start streaming on Saturday. And it as much as you're streaming on Twitch, I'm using the same overlays. It's pretty much the same exact stream as I had, except you can't like there's there's features in Kick that you, doesn't have Twitch. Like I don't get a stream yeah. summary. I don't get I can't see how many people are watching my stream. You can't see who's in your chat. Like somebody could right. lurk and you would never know. And yeah, there's no viewer list or anything. No, nothing. So it's like almost like back to basics. But bare bones Twitch. Bare bones, right. But something that I really like about it is it's like a new beginning because it's an early beta stage. Like I know that it's alive and they just signed XQC to like a $70 million contract with a $30 million bonus if he does slot streams. And then... um, I think they signed Amaranth, which was the original hot tub streamer. And uh, that is a $60 million contract. Like, that's not a small amount of money. Money? No. And that's what? Between, between the two of them? It's $130 million. 130 plus, plus 30, 50, 50 plus 30. incentives? No, 30 in incentives. And I'm sure Amaranth has. I was going to say, but right. I don't know what that is. Gotcha. Because that's not my type of content. But anyway, um, I've had a lot of fun. We we went uh, we went live on Saturday, and it brought me back to streaming when like you had major goals in mind. And the goals were small goals, not large goals. And the community right now is a lot smaller than Twitch. Right. So is there what, raiding in kick? No, not yet. You, can, you cannot raid in kick. So gotcha. there, the, the, the channels are smaller. You, you know, the destiny two channel is significantly smaller the SWOTOR channel is significantly smaller. The Guild Wars 2 that I've been watching is significantly smaller. And the point I'm trying to make is it. Ju- I feel excited for it. Am I done on Twitch? No. But it feels refreshing to be streaming with a small goal in mind. So right now yeah. I'm trying to make 75 followers. And followers are harder to come by on the platform because there's not as many people there to find you. Right. And I, so far, I ended at 34, I'm at 34 followers from zero in a week. Nice. Yeah, so I'm feeling really good. I've been having a lot of fun. Um, It just feels fun. And not that Twitch isn't fun, but, you know, sometimes you just need a break from something and something new. And it's really nice to have a second option. I'm not saying I'm not going back to Twitch, but I'm saying that it's nice that I can. What if I set a schedule where two nights a week I'm on kick and two nights a week I'm on Twitch? You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with me doing that. No. Well, and especially with because it has different uh it's it's not like Twitch, right? You, like you said, it's more bare bones. It kind of forces you to stream a little bit differently. Not a whole lot, but there are some things that you can't do on Twitch. So in order to compensate for it, no doubt you have to change, you know, like you mentioned the chat and all of that. You know, that 
no doubt changes how you stream, I imagine. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I know that the mistakes I've made in Twitch, I'm trying not to make those mistakes on kick. Right. And I am trying to be different than I am a little bit different. It's almost like a second chance. Yeah. You know, and Mm -hmm. I'm just having a lot of fun and it's different. I've met some new people that are streamers on kick that do not stream on Twitch. I know one streamer that has never streamed on Twitch decided to start streaming when they announced kick like that's pretty cool to me. Yeah. Right. Like always wanted to do it, but always felt like nobody would ever find him because of Twitch. And now, you know, he's he's got a goal of making 150 followers. Like, that's pretty cool to me. That's awesome. Right. Um, so, yes. Kick. Kick. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely interesting. I, uh, yeah, I don't you know. Been, what have you well, been streaming Well, I was just trying to think kick? of, like, just Destiny. I, uh, I've been having a lot of fun in Destiny, and it right now is my favorite event of the year. It's the Summer Solstice event. It's super, it's super repetitive, but like I like this event because you earn gear from it. Like you get yeah. gear that is geared for, like designed just for this event. So when you're wearing that, you actually earn the gear. You don't. You earn the gear. It's not like something you purchase just to look good. You yeah. earn the gear, so I feel like it means more. Um, right. Shout out to the run week ne- run next week, Guardians. Um, we cleared Root of Nightmares as a team. The complete bo- the complete raid together now. So we've moved on to the next raid. Um, every week somebody was out for like the last three weeks, and we've killed the final boss, but never as a six man team. And I don't want, like, we could have all moved to the next boss or next raid, but I was like, no, we need the full clear as a team. Like, everybody right. clears it as a team, and we move on to the next one. So we've mm-hmm. moved on to Vault of Glass, which I've done that a bunch of times, but never, like, had to teach it. And I've made some mistakes teaching it, but we've done really well. Um, we should clear it next week. And then we're going to be going into Last Wish, which is a harder raid, but it's going to be fun to learn it on my end and the team's end. Because we have, um, so two people on the team are experienced raiders, but not teaching level experienced raiders. Then you have um, two people on the team that are that have raided before, you know what I mean? And then you have two people that are brand new to raiding. So in Destiny, it's a six-man activity, and most of the time, six people have a job to do. You know, not in like WoW or SWOTOR where you go into a raid and you might just have to kill stuff. Like you're just swinging your lightsabers, and that's all that matters. Yeah, stay out of the stuff. and Yeah, stay out of the – don't stand it stupid. Heal the people. Right. Don't stand it stupid. the aggro, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Yep. For that – it's uh, good. And then um, during the season, right at the end here, they've released a new mission that gives you a new exotic, and it's timed. So myself, Doritos, and Ezzy, which is cheese in cheese, uh, uh, cheese in, in game, uh, we've been running it. Uh, we've run it two nights, only a few pulls each time. We have not cleared it, but we're getting close. The final boss is like a maze, and you need to kill minotaurs and then run back and do DPS to the boss, kill more minotaurs, and then do DPS to the boss. And we've run out of time. But if everybody dies, it kicks you to orbit as well, so you have to start the whole mission over again. Ooh. Yeah, so it's like, so stakes are high, but it's awesome. Yeah. That's understandable. I mean, a lot of those, when you have to restart the entire mission... When everybody dies, it always increases the stress factor by like at least two times because yep. it's like, ah, oh, I don't want to be the one 
who gets completely wrecked and causes the whole team to wipe, and then we have to start all over. Mm-hmm. Um, my last point I want to tell everybody is I've talked about it for a while, how much I like to read, and I just don't. Well, I started reading again. I'm reading a Warhammer book. It's called Dark Plague. It's about the Dark Imperium. And I got it last week, and I'm already on Chapter 12. Like, instead of staring at my phone on the pooper, I'm reading. Like, I after I stream or whatever, I read, even if it's a page or two, I'm reading. Yeah. I've taken it to work, and I've read it on lunch. Like, it's really good. And the amount of lore that's in Warhammer is fucking nuts. Oh, it's insane. It's insane. Um, so, um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I actually went to Games Workshop. Do you know what that is? Mm-mm. So Games Workshop is like uh, the people who make Warhammer. It's their store. So you go in and it's all the minifigures everywhere. And okay. um, I went out to dinner with the kids and I made sure it was in the town where there was one. And I already called earlier in the day to see if they had the book that I wanted. And I went in there and bought went in there to buy one book and I bought three. Um, <laughs> that's how they get you, man. Well, I'm listen, I, but I love to read and I'm making time to read the other night. I stopped streaming at 10 30 so I could go read like, I'm like excited again to read, not just audible it. You know what I mean? Right. Like audible is great, but like, I lo- like when we're done with this podcast tonight, I am totally going to read. Gonna but sit anyway, down and read. I, I know what you really quick. I know what you mean about reading versus listening to an audio book, because when you read, you have to generate the image more so in your mind than like audio books. You just kind of hear it. And especially like the Star Wars audio books, which have the sound effects and everything. Your brain doesn't have to do all that heavy lifting. You know, and I, Warhammer I know, I like the it, same way. Right. Like the, the, like the the way the books are written, it's like John pulls out a uh, uh, light green Granny Smith apple. He spins it around and stares at the apple. As he's holding the apple, he sees white spots on the apple. He wipes the apple on his shirt before he takes a bite. But then he decides to pull out a knife and cut the apple into little pieces. Like, that, like in, in, in an audio book, or like in a normal book, it would have been like, John decides to eat an apple. It was a Granny Smith. Boom, done. You know what I mean? Move on. But right. they like carry the conversation so much and it's so much detail that you're like, Jesus Christ, all right, let him eat this fucking apple so we can get on to like them chainsawing somebody in half. Yeah. But the lore, just like the space marine lore and like finding out how they augment each one and how each one has different augments so they're good at different things. It's fucking crazy. There's, I'll send you a video. There's a, vi- a fan-made video. It was one guy, and he made this complete CGI battle of a Warhammer. I, I have no clue, but I know it was Warhammer. And you would be amazed that one guy did this. It took him, like, I don't know, a year and a half or, like, something insane. But it's just visually, it's insane. Oh, you'll have to so send the, that to me. I'm, I'm gonna. The... Uh, the Warhammer, the universe, but also, like, the community is huge. You know, it's so... incredibly talented. Right. So one of my favorite games that I don't talk about a lot is called Dawn of War 2. It's a real-time strategy game, but it almost plays like a third-person, like, dungeon game a little bit. Where it's still like a typing game, like an RTS, but it's 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 not quite like a typing contest like StarCraft. You know what I mean? Right. And in the storyline of Dawn of War 2 is awesome. I would say that's good, but I haven't really... Like, I never played Space Marine. Did you ever play that game? I didn't. My first Warhammer game was Vermintide 2. Okay, and that plays a lot like... Um, Left 4 Dead. Dark Tide. Melee. And Dark Tide. Yes. Yeah. So, like, uh, Dawn of War. Um, really quick for all those yeah. wondering, it's Warhammer Astartes. A S T A R T E S is the uh, fan uh, project that I was talking about. 
Yeah, so there's a it. yeah, so there's a like Space Marine, Warhammer Space Marine. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm playing it. Oops. So I'm trying to say. Well, Devon's a sharp-edged melee weapon. Oh shit. With power- yeah, so basically you run around. Oh, what the fuck? You can't pl- fast forward or it cuts it off. That sucks. Anyway, uh, like I kind of want to play this game, but I just feel like every time I play a Warhammer game since um, Dawn of War 2, it's like, does it live up to the hype? Like Dark Tide, when we played with... um. Oh my god. Why am I having a brain fart? Arcane. Arcane, thank you. Um when we were playing with Arcane, like it was fun, but it was too repetitive and it was so much of like the same thing over and over right. and over. But either way, the lore is crazy. Yeah, it's insanely deep. So, uh what have you been up to this week, Nick? Uh, well, let me tell you. Uh, well, actually, thank you very much for asking, Marcus. So I'm uh, in Maine on a beach vacation this week, and I'm playing a lot of Tears of the Kingdom on my Switch. That's right. It's a lot of fun. That's all I got. I'm not even playing Division 2 paintball this week. A lot of ice cream, cannabis, and tequila. Did you want to do the impression? I'm sorry. No, no, that was that was great. <laughs> um, okay, AIE news: the week starting July 30th, it might be the 29th. I should look, but uh, running the whole week, first week of August, ending August 5th. That's Summer of Love. I will be doing a special recording of me reading off that, and it will be a complete separate edition of the podcast, like a bonus, just teaser trailer thing for it. Um, Every night, there's something to do in AIE. All the games are doing special events, and it's all circled around Wednesday, August 2nd, which is Remembrance Day. So the Guild's been around for, you know, 15, 17 years And in that time, people have passed away and become one with the Force. And the guild is, as big as it is, it's really a tight-knit family. And you kind of, when you, it kind of hits you hard. Because a lot of us may not know each other in real life, but we sure know each other digitally. And one day that person signs off and you don't realize that that person passed away. And you might not find out for a month, two months, a year. You don't know if you ever find out. And the and the sad thing is, is you know, we like to celebrate those people who become one with the force. So on Tuesday, I mean Wednesday, August second, in all of the big games, we will be all getting together and doing a town hall, talking about the guild, talking about Remembrance Day, and then it kind of goes to an open forum to for guildies and friends to talk about people that they've lost this past year or just that they've lost in general that they want to talk about and share. It's really a special moment. It makes, it really makes you appreciate the community that we're involved in. And yeah, just a um, side sidebar to that. Balto is playing castle crashers and it makes me want to play castle crashers. It just popped up on my Steam notification that Balto is playing Castle Crashers. I want to play Castle Crashers. So if all this sounds fun to you, go to AIE-Guild.org. Go to the top right-hand corner of the website, get our Discord info, and ask for a guild invite. Whether or not you play SWOTOR, Destiny 2, World of Warcraft, Guild Wars 2, Diablo 4, Lord of the Rings Online, or Final Fantasy 14, we would love to have you now normally nick has those the the bladder the size of a p and it's just a tracks and i here so i don't have to pee do you have to pee no let's do working class questions i'm not nick 
That's I right. I can make it through an entire episode. And that's right. You know what it's time for, Marcus. It's time for Working Class Questions. Is that right? Or do we have something else to talk about? No, I think this is perfect. I think this is a perfect icebreaker for you to come back. My busy life. This is a great episode. Yeah. Nice, uh, nice, calm episode. Quinn asks, is sand rough, coarse, and irritating? Nah, man. We love sand over here at the uh, Working Class Nerds. Chimeri Sand. Go Chimeri Sand. The only thing about sand that's irritating to me is when you have to put on lotion and you think you've wiped all the sand off your legs, but then you go to wipe it in, there's still a few grains, and it just fucks up your day. You you know what? Also, I, I agree with you, yes, on that. And also, when you go to uh, beach houses that like aren't super well cleaned and you climb into the bed and the bed is all sandy... Dude, that that is the worst too. You gotta like take everything off, shake everything out. Tell those motherfuckers to wash their sheets. That too. Damn. Uh, favorite beach or coastal memory? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I've been to so Myrtle Beach was actually pretty good over on the East Coast. Yeah, it's the but best coast. That was. The it's the least coast that's, you know, least anyway. Uh, that was the only trip that I've been to on a beach where the only thing I did for a week and a half straight was sit on the beach with food and drink and just just sit on the beach. Like that's that's all I did for an entire week was just sit on the beach. I when I'm out here on the West Coast, there's a lot of fun stuff to do on the beach. So, you know, you run around and you get in the water. You don't have to worry about jellyfish too much. Or there's hills to climb and stuff like that. On the East Coast, it's just everybody's kind of lazy. And so you just kind of, like, lay out on the beach. And it's just calm. And it's just not a whole lot going on. And you don't get in the water because there's a ton of jellyfish. And you laugh at the morons that get in the water. And they come out with a jellyfish sting all over their face and you're like haha that's why you don't get in the water moron you just sit there and you drink your beer and that was actually pretty that was that was a pretty good trip i had all my family there too which makes it nice marcus uh i actually have two my favorite beach is uh race point it's the furthest point of massachusetts into the atlantic ocean and that's the beach so like you see seals and there's a good chance there's a great white out there but they're not gonna eat me there's seals out there. Um, yeah. My my favorite coastal memory It's kind of I'm kind of so my wife and I got married on the beach essentially like a church was like two houses away from the water and oh, nice. like our reception was on the water so like Right. I could say that was my be- my favorite uh coastal memory. Another really good one was um, is just being with the family at the beach. It doesn't really matter which one. It's just being with them and not having to work. Yeah. Oh. Best dish at a Chinese restaurant. Side note, it's orange chicken. Close. You're close. Ooh. Oh, I could go first. My t- Best? Gen- okay. General Sal's chicken and egg mm. roll. Done. All right, that's that's really good. See, for me, I really like a, like a a combination fried rice. You got like the chicken and the pork and the beef, and then you got the good, especially the good the good fried rice has like chunks of pineapple in it. I've never and had, the, dude. I've never had carrots. fried rice. I've never had fried rice that had pineapple in it. Oh, dude, it is so good, especially if you get like the right seasoning on the on the meat. Combination. I'm telling you, combination. You got you got your chicken, your beef, and your pork with fried rice. You got peas, carrots, may. Uh, no, no, never mind. Yeah, peas and carrots, and then shallots and pineapple with the fried. Uh, oh, it is so good. That's that's the way to go. Duck sauce or soy opinion. sauce? Either either is good. Uh, I, prefer, I, I prefer soy, but oh, see, I prefer I duck. Oh, I go. prefer like 
I can do soy in my egg roll, but I don't like soy on my fried rice. I like duck sauce on my fried rice. I feel like the soy doesn't it, it like takes away the flavor of the awesome rice where I feel like the duck sauce enhances it. Uh, have another question. Yeah. Quinn says, Marcus, how are you kicking it on? Ki- Wait, how are you kicking it on kick? How's it kicking uh, on kick, Marcus? It's good. It's, it's invigorating. That's what's up. No dog asks what made Marcus decide to make the move to kick over Twitch, which I mean, um, I think you explained it a little earlier, but go ahead. Well, and get back into I don't it. know. I didn't answer that one. I just think I wanted a, I wanted to try something new and you know, if kick is going to grow to anything, they need content creators to go there. Right. And right. I'm not saying that I'm going to be the next verified partner on kick or anything like that. But I felt like I'm a small enough content creator that why not? Right. Yeah. Like, why not? And if it so, the one thing that I can pride myself with uh, Twitch is I we've had a lot of creators from Twitch on this podcast. Yeah, like a lot. And if we can do that with Kick and get new content creators to come on the podcast and hopefully help them get a follower, that's a win. And for me, I look at it as new platform, new faces, new voices, and a new. New something new. Um, also, too, I'm really curious, and I can't talk shit about. I can't talk shit about a platform until you experience the platform. There it is. You know what yeah, I mean? Um, absolutely. I talk Don't I, until you try it. Right. I told Doctor Gameology in the fir- beginning that I would never stream on Kick because it's owned by a gambling site, and I'm actually not a gambler. But then I thought about it, and I'm like. I'm not a gambler, but I'm a people person and I thrive on talking to people. And if kick brings me to a new group of people to talk to that we can have on the podcast, why wouldn't I want us there? Well, and you don't necessarily have to promote gambling and you know, like you don't have to <gasps> promote gambling to be on kick. Like, I get oh. it kind of supports a gamble. Like, well, it does support but it, but here's. Same- at the same time, like they're using Amazon services, so isn't Amazon supporting it too? Which you're supporting Amazon if you're on Twitch, so therefore A equals B, B equals C, A equals C. So you're supporting a gambling site if you're on Twitch. Like, uh. but think about the money that Kick is paying Amazon to use their service. Right, right. So if Kick gets really big, like. Amazon's making more money on kick than Twitch is. Yep. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's a win-win. The yep. other thing that is really intriguing to me that I was really interested in seeing is their payout structure is very different than Twitch. Right. So where Twitch, so in order to be a part of their affiliate program on kick, you have to stream for five hours and have 75 followers. That's it. Where okay. on where on Twitch, you need 50 followers, stream for seven days, and have an average of three viewers. But their payout program is, so when you subscribe on Twitch and you pay $4.99, we're just going to call it $5, the content creator gets 50% of that. Yep. It's a 50-50 split. So the content creator gets $250, Amazon gets $250. Where on Kick... They're giving you ninety five percent, so essentially you're getting four ninety, right? Versus two fifty. So for a small creator who has thirty subs, you know you're essentially almost doubling your money from Kick, and that allows you to put more effort into your stream because you have a little more income coming in. Right. The other one feature, like in but. Kick is in very big beta. So if you love all of the features that Twitch has, it's like you're playing original WoW in 2004 versus WoW now in 2023. Yeah. Like you have the basics, but that's it. And um, 
one feature I really, 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 really like about Kick is there's a button where you can shut off hot tubs and gambling streams where you can't see them. Nice. Which that is a quality of life feature mm-hmm. I love. Yeah. Because, like, I could care less about somebody playing slots, and I could care less about somebody swimming in a hot tub. Yep. Same. Totally same. But thank you, No Dog, for asking that question, because that's a really good one. Yeah. Um, and if anybody makes the switch to quick kick or starts off, please DM me, Atrax or Nick, please, so we can promote you and talk about it, because, um, yeah. you know, we would love to see that. It's a it's a new platform and let's uh well let's talk about it. Sovi asks, have you considered Warframe? And I have played Warframe. It's I don't think it's bad, but I just kind of moved on. It's it it is a grind, but I think it's a good game. Uh it's no. For me no. no. I I can't play another game. So like right now I'm in the middle of playing Guild Wars 2 and Destiny. That's all I got time for. Yeah, I think Warframe is too Destiny like for you to be able to play Destiny and Warframe at the same time. Like there's you know what I mean? Like it sucks up a lot of time. Well I just feel like if you're starting to play a game from the beginning, it's okay to just play the game. Right. You know? Well Sylvie got. Sylvie wants to know who's your preferred content creator for Destiny Two information? I don't really go for Destiny 2 information, but the other Marcus B, Marcus B Gaming, I'm going to give him a shout out because uh, he's the one who pops up in my YouTube recommended and sometimes I'll click on him because he's a homie. Yeah, I would say um, it's funny you say that. Content creator for Destiny 2 information, I have two. So first choice is always Marcus B Gaming. That is M-A-R-C-U-S-B Gaming. G A M I N G. He's on Twitch and YouTube and Kick. Um, show him some love. Second is Asti Cross. He's probably one of the biggest Destiny creators. Um, he does really good videos talking about stuff for information. So for me, um, I like I like him. Also what about Iron Worker? Oh, Iron, Iron Worker, Worker makes maybe. great. Yeah, he makes great gun videos. Um, yeah. like gun breakdowns, damage stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, what about any other games information? That's a good question. Where do I go for my games information? Ooh. Uh, yeah, that is a good one. I watch. So lately I've been watching a lot of top 10 things, top 10 okay. compilations. And so I've been going through the so like outside Xbox has some and Game Ranks has some and they're just sort of like all sorts of wacky different types of top 10 lists. So you have things like top 10 well, hold on. I'm going to I'm you know what let's 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 do some exact looking here we'll we'll go to outside xbox we'll do some of their top 10 lists game ranks has also some good top 10 lists so you have like uh seven bosses that were immediately killed by a much scarier boss or seven creepiest fighting game characters that belong in a horror game you know, so random random things like that i actually i kind of like fall asleep to some of those uh you also have game ranks we'll we'll, we'll look up there Look up their YouTube page really quick for some of their fun top 10 lists. They also have some good before you buys, but I don't really watch those. I just watch some top 10 lists because they're fun to think about and, 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 you know, like, oh, hey, I wonder what games also, you know, I I also think about like 10 things players hated in 2023 of the first half or 10 breast secrets of 2023. I mean, these are year specific, but then you also have things like 10 things only max level players in RPGs can do. And just a ton of different top 10 lists, which, you know, that's that's where I usually go. Also, um for other game information, I just Google is always a good option. If I'm looking for a game for game information, I just I go to Google. You know, 
IGN yes. has some okay reviews that I watch. Before you buy by Game Ranks is also good, but I I try to I try to mostly just watch trailers and then I'll I don't know I kind of make decisions off that, but I it is what it is, Marcus. I like watching. Um, so like there's RG85 on YouTube. He's a Nintendo Switch like creator. He's not an official okay. creator, but like he he's really good. Um, I like watching that. There's um, there's some other ones that I don't actually know their names, um, but mostly it's about A Track said. I go to YouTube and just type in the game and I watch some stuff. Um, yeah. Mostly, like honestly, my favorite content about a game that I'm just starting to play, I'll type in Guild Wars 2 Beginner's Guide and mm, I'll watch a couple too. of those because yeah. I feel like that gives you a taste of what the game's going to be better mm-hmm. than a trailer or better than... Because, like, a trailer is deceiving. A trailer is just trying to show you how awesome the game is, but it's not actually showing you how to play the game. Yeah, that's fair. You know, so I like... That's, you know... Um... Yeah, that's a good one. Who is the guest? I lied. We don't have a guest. I said we had a guest, but we didn't. Well, it's you didn't us. know. You didn't know. Yeah, I thought we had a guest, but we don't. So you're stuck with our voices this entire episode. Psych! What is your favorite Get... car or truck? Mitsubishi Lancer 2006 Evo Rally Edition. Um, didn't even have to think. <laughs> my favorite car is a 1996 Volkswagen Passat VR6 stick. All right. Um nice. The my favorite truck is like a 1983 Ford cuz they're big and giant. Um I don't like oh, trucks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry. What is your what is your dream vehicle? The exact same car that I just listed. But I'll get even more specific. Obviously, lime green, like a nice lime racing green with some neon underneath it. And probably some sort of black flame decal or something like that. You know, just just all styled out in green. Uh, Mine's the Ford uh, Raptor pickup Mm. truck. All right. There you go. It's $120,000. I can't afford that. Dang. Yeah, that that's 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 a lot. Yeah. Sylvie also wants to know if you could play an instrument, what would it be? Skin flute. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I would love to master the piano. That's if that's I... my favorite instrument, hands down. I could listen to piano music all the time and it's so calming. Um if I honestly like it's not an instrument, I wish I could type. Like on a keyboard? Yeah. That's fair. Like I yeah, you, when Nick you jokes. You do make a lot of spelling errors. It has nothing to do with spelling errors. <laughs> it has nothing to oh. do with it. Oh. Yeah, I'm talking about just typing itself. Oh. I Most of the time I make uh, typing errors because my fingers are so fat on my phone that it just hits other buttons and I'm too lazy to go back and check All right. it. Fair enough. But no, like legit, I would love like I wish I learned how to type. Like the the thirty five and younger age group like grew up with ke- keyboards. Like yeah. we didn't. Like when I was in school we had typewriters. Like we didn't have computers to learn to type on. So like right. it was never a thing and we always used pen and paper. So it was never a necessity. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Scarlet asks, Marcus, what was the first piece of Destiny lore that got you into the lore? I'm going through the Bray family lore from another podcast. So I listened to, I think it's called that another podcast. It was the guy reading the Destiny lore books, like verbatim. Okay. And it's pretty fucking awesome to get into that because they're like its own story in itself. 
Right. Um, the first piece of lore, I can't tell you, um, but it was definitely my name is Bife is the YouTube creator. It was one of his videos. Um, I don't know what it was about at that point, or maybe it was before Beyond Light, and I watched it and listened to it, and I was like, oh, my God, this game is fucking cool. Yeah. It's, that's what's up. Mm-hmm. You know who asks our next question, Marcus? Uh, it's Dorito! And Doritos asks, if you have the chance to live as a video game character in a video game, who would it be and why? Let me think about this for a minute. If you Awkward, could silent. Awkward silence is good for a character. Yeah, we got we to gotta think about this here. Ooh, you have to live as them in the video game world. Which means, I mean, like, at, at, at the very least, you can kind of guarantee what your life is going to be like. You know the events of your life. So I suppose that's kind of, that's kind of good. One video game character. That is a great question, Doritos. I, I got to do Mount Rushmore. I've got mine. Yeah. So, so you go ahead. I got to think about the this. The first two serious ones are uh, Commander Shepard from Mass Effect. Mm. Okay. And then the second would be my character from SWOTOR, the Sith Warrior story, where you actually have to go through that story and fuck Darth Barriss up and, like, go through the trials and tribulations of a Sith. Like, that would be rad, too. Like, I could live that life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, The third one is... uh. It would be a short-lived life because you would get killed in a gang fight. But SM Playboy's uh, GTA RP character. Oh, there you go. GTA Five character. Well, you could pick yeah. like Trevor from GTA Five. No, dude. Like, like no, you no, no. Be, like you want SM Playboy? Dude, have like... you ever have you ever watched SM Playboy do that? Oh yeah, man. It's that great. shit is wild to me. By the way, go like, check out the SM Playboy episode. Yeah. Yeah, man. Dude, G- GTA 5 RP is great. All I right. can't hear uh, you. I also have to do a Mount Rushmore. I'm going to go with the Vault Hunter from Borderlands. That would be a pretty that would be a pretty insane life to live. Uh, and I mean, you're guaranteed to make it through because you're the main character. So, you know, at least you get to live. Unless you picked maybe Roland or Lilith from the first one. Nah, I'd, I'd be the Vault Hunter, like, later on. Maybe from two or three. And then I would. I also think that would be really cool to be Sora from Kingdom Hearts. That's a Yeah, pretty... just, like, the bad, most badass dude ever. Right. Or uh, Sephiroth. Sephiroth would be pretty scary. The fucking dude. Or, like, dude, dude, could you imagine being the Doom guy? No, I'd be scared that, shitless. Dude, that'd be intense, bro. I, I don't know if I could live the Doom Guy life. That's too much for me. Maybe maybe Mario. Mario just jumps on some mushrooms, saves the princess, kind of, sort of. Sylvie asks our last question. If you could have the, ability, the abilities of an X-Men, which would you want? And let's limit it to one of the cartoons or movies. So we don't just have an entire list of X Men. I know I have I have two. Actually I have three. I lied. I have three. Three characters, Mount Rushmore, really quick, super easy for me. Jean Grey or the Phoenix, whatever you want to call her. Uh, because I mean, probably arguably one of the most powerful characters in that universe. Cyclops, because I think his powers are the coolest, is just literally his abilities as he shoots lasers from his eyes. That's pretty dope. And then Magneto, because the ability to control metal is just incredibly broken. So, I mean, he literally extracted the iron out of a guy's blood. So, I mean, that's that's pretty intense. Those those are my that's my Mount Rushmore for X Men. Marcus? I only have one. 
Gambit. Gambit. Hey, mon ami. Hey, mon ami. I, I don't know. He's like a gigolo, but yeah. All yeah, right. That, that's the guy. What are you guys talking about in here? Find out next episode of Working, Working Class, Class Nerds. Nerds.